Okay, quarantine content. Let's get it. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to apply the preset. So I have a couple presets here. I have three. That's a, I guess that's a few. Um, but we're going to apply automatic toning. Now, this will basically just do your basic adjustments here based on what Lightroom's algorithm thinks should be adjusted. So it applied some highlight reduction, shadow, uh, boosting, whites, blacks, and then color. And then of course I added a little bit of noise reduction because this is a bit noisy without it. So let's go ahead and take a look without it. So yeah, it's crazy. So um, enable profile corrections, I have that set to auto. And yeah. Let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at this one. So this one is pretty much perfect in terms of exposure. Um, and this one is looking good. Automatic, automatic, I sound like a robot. Um, automatic adjustments typically do a really good job of getting a base going. The only thing I really adjust is just exposure and maybe white balance. Speaking of white balance, it's highlight those three ambient layers and hit auto and then I'm gonna adjust it one more just so we got the same white balance throughout and then this one looks pretty good I'm gonna bring this down though so I think I think we're ready to go so let's go ahead and highlight these and then edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. And I'm gonna take a sip of soda. Who says that, by the way? Was it Rich? Rich always does that. He's like, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. That was obnoxiously loud. All right, cool. Basically, what we're gonna be doing here is blending. Blending and color correction. So we need to take this base exposure and we're going to put it right there in the middle. So it goes dark, medium, bright, and then our flash can go at the top. But I'm going to duplicate this flash by hitting Control J. Get out of here, settings. Control J. I hit another button on my keyboard. But Control J, I'm going to set this one to color. And I'm going to turn it off. And I set this one to darken, darken. So color and darken, Woo, there we go. So basically we're splitting the image into darken and color. So our darken is gonna take care of our highlights and then color is gonna take care of color, obviously. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn this one on, turn that one on. and. Basically, blending is super easy. All you have to do is just go to your RGB channel and hold down Control or Command if you're on a Macintosh, and then hover over this RGB channel, and then that'll select your highlights in the layer that you currently have visible in your document. So, from here, we can just apply that layer mask. Look at that. So simple. So simple. Beautiful. And I think that's all we really need to do for the ambient. Unless this one... No, we don't need this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just group this by hitting Command G, or Control G, I should say. And I'm gonna call this unused. Put a black mask on it and I'll put it right down there. Cool. So, look at that. So now you can see what Darken does. It's darkening up those highlights so nicely. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and put a black layer mask by holding down Alt and hitting this little thingy thing, layer mask icon, there we go. And that's gonna create a black mask. And I'm going to choose an opacity of 50%, flow of 100%, and 
and I'm just gonna paint just a little bit and I'm gonna switch my colors around just to get rid of that so I'm painting black and white on this layer mask as you can see here pretty simple stuff so far uh, I'm gonna paint white on the highlight areas and maybe a little bit here a little bit there definitely a little bit there and I think whoop, mm, it kind of gives you a little bit of halo so that's basically what we're doing it was we're just taking care of the highlights don't worry about the color because look at this watch this watch this BAM ain't that freaking cool all right, so we're gonna take this, but I don't want it in every single spot. So I'm gonna put a basic white layer mask on it and I'm going to paint black on the areas that we don't want it. Which I think is just, yeah, those, are those spots. All right, that's pretty nifty. You can see how it takes care of that color like almost immediately. Uh, Alright, there we go. Let's go ahead and do a few adjustments here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control shift alt e That makes your fingers hurt, definitely. So we got a little bit of color cast issues here. I'm going to show you what I mean. See that? See all that nastiness up there? cancel that. I'm going to make a real basic, what do you call these things? Path. I'm going to make a basic path. I'm going to make sure this is set to exclude overlapping shapes with the rubber band turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and just go to these corner pieces. You don't have to be super accurate because we are going to feather it a little, a little bit. That was a hiccup. And let's go ahead and just put that right there. And there, and there, and there, and there. Control zero to zoom back out. And then to finish this off, we can hit Control Shift Enter. Perfect. And now we can feather it by about three pickles. And let's go ahead and hit, wait a minute. We need to set this up first. So if you don't have this set up, which you probably don't since it's a custom key bind, go down to your keyboards and shortcuts menu, which is located under edit, keyboard shortcuts, image, and go to replace color and set that to control shift alt R. It's gonna say that it's tied to another keybind, but this keybind that it's tied to is something that you'll probably never use because it has to do with 3D stuff. So hit, okay. So, Control, Control, Alt, Control, Shift, Alt, R. Wow, I can't even remember. So I'm gonna set this to fuzziness of 150. And I'm going to hit this little area right here because you can see it's a little bit color casty. I'm gonna bring down this to about negative 50. Perfect. And you can see it's toned down a lot. But if you want to get rid of it completely, watch this. So I'm, I'm using the brush tool, right? And I'm going to set this bad boy to color blend mode. You can do that up here if you'd like. And I'm going to sample an area near this contaminated area. So I'm going to sample this and I'm going to make sure we are in color sample mode of, or not color sample mode, uh, color blend mode. And then we're just going to paint that right there. See that? Bam. Perfect. All right, cool. Beans. Um, this is bothering me, even though it really shouldn't, but I'm going to select this with the quick selection tool, just like so. I'm going to, oh, basically what I did there is I'm using these individual selection 
presets. So we have our initial selection, add selection, subtract selection, subtract selection. There we go. And I usually just keep it in add, and then whenever I want to go into subtract, I hit alt on the keyboard, and that switches it to subtract. So let's go ahead and just do that. And I'm going to bring that right there. Bring up your replace color. And I'm going to bring this down to about negative 35, just so it matches up with that spot right there. Control D to deselect. This is bothering me. This is too, too much, too, too much. So I'm going to use the pr replace color. You can, you guys can see that I use replace color a lot. So about negative 30. That looks a little bit more neutral. Why do I keep talking like this? Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit up the brightness and contrast. I always add 20. Why? I don't know. 20 seems good. And now you see how the image kind of looks a little bit better, but it's not perfect. So let's go ahead and hit select color range. Excuse me. Midtones. I'm going to bring this up to about 60 in the fuzziness. And then I'm going to want to feather this pretty heavily. So function shift F6. That's going to bring up your feather selection dialog box. So hit 1, 5, and 0. 150 pixels. One, 150 pixels. Pickles. Pixels? Pickles. Enter. And uh, control M brings up your curves. And we're going to bring up the midtones quite a lot. And I'm going to bring down the shadow just to get that contrast looking good. Yeah, that looks really nice. If you don't like it in certain spots, like I don't like it here, you can just go back to your history panel and see these boxes right here. You can set these as your history state and use the history brush to basically kind of undo that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit da, 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 feather because that's where the previous curves adjustment was. What am I trying to say? I can't remember. W, that's your history brush tool. I'm just going to paint right there. Cool beans. I think that's looking real snazzy. So if we look for right there, and there we go. So I think that looks pretty darn good. What is going on here? I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna sample this, set that to color. That's the color of whatever this thing is. Couch, sofa, thingy. I'm going to do a little bit of screen blacking out. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a real quick path around here. Control, Shift, Enter makes it into a selection. Function, Shift, F6. One, pickle feather. And we're going to go ahead and go to the gradients. Basics black to white and I'm going to bring the brightness up to five on this node and then I'm gonna bring the brightness up to 15 on this one actually maybe oh wait that's I'm dumb 15 there we go I think I did whoa that was weird okay cool Five. There we go. Now we have a TV gradient. So I'm going to save that. TV. Link TV. That's more fancy. And then I'm going to just drag that right there. Coolio. That looks way cooler. That looks sick. Alright, I need to fix this. There we go. Since we still have our history source there. Alright, cool. Control, Shift, A. 
That'll bring up your camera raw settings. Go to the transform tool. I have a stroke there, Jesus. Upright. Vertical. Click OK. And I think that looks good. All right, let's go ahead. Ooh, wait. Now do that in Lightroom. Flatten. Control S saves it back into Lightroom. And look at this, look at this. That to that. Look at how much better it is. Better? -er? Wow. That's a uh, great grammar. Post Photoshop. There we go. That's a little too much shadows. But I do like what it did. I livened up that image just a little bit more. All right, cool. I'm going to do another vertical adjustment. Woo! Okay, that's better. So auto did a little bit better. Awesome possum. I'm going to... Do I want to vignette it? Nah. I'm going to include these presets because they're kind of a pain to make. Um, but yeah, they'll be in the, 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 the description below. So they're going to be in like a Dropbox folder and then you can download them to your computer and then do what you will with them. So, five stars, send it to client. That's pretty much it. Take care.